and thank you very much to uh, Dan Blatches for giving me an opportunity both to write um, a, a chapter in the book and also to present. This is the first time I've done either, both. Um, so it's great to be here uh, again for a number of reasons, but wonderful to be here today to present. So um, the work, my work for my master's and my work for the chapter was on um, using the CV as an interpretive learning tool, so helping students to use um, that document to um, to integrate. So what I looked at was, um, this as part of the agenda was my questions, the context and rationale for my particular work, um, the design enactment and assessment of the technique findings, and um, then moving on for future directions um, for, for my particular interests, I suppose I call them. So my research questions for my master's and for the chapter was really based around um, using the CD um, how, when I'm teaching CV writing, can I help students to make better connections? And I'm talking about connections between everything, between life, between work, between education, between your modules, between college, between outside college. Um, and also, how can I best use CV writing to make students, like I said here, more self-aware, more purposeful in their learning and more reflective, so basically more intentional learners. Um, so the context is um, a pre-placement module in second year finance, it's a five credit module, um, taught in the first term for the BSc Finance to students. I co-teach it with a colleague, um, Mark Hutchinson in the Department of Accounting and Finance. Um, the course ecology, as you remember, college was um, AC2019, the placement plan is taught in term one. Um, work placement, um, of which I am the work placement officer in UCC, um, takes place in third year. Um, the BSc Finance programme, however, is split. We have two cohorts of students going out of work placement. One cohort of students goes out from July to December, the other for January to June. So I actually can follow a cohort directly after Christmas in their pre-placement and recruitment and selection, um, which is what I did with this particular research to see how the module would work. Um, so um, I'd also like to point out that for the work placement in, in University College Cork, as distinct from other universities, it's a, the recruitment and selection is a selective, competitive process where the students are selected by virtue of their CV for interview um, by the employer. So it's a competitive, real-world recruitment and selection process. Um, my contribution over the years, and I've been working with Professor uh, Mark Hutchinson over the last six or seven years on this, was to um, move from standalone workshops on communication skills, presentation skills, and team working sp skills, which feedback from students and from employers was that they didn't find it relevant. They couldn't see the relevance of what I was doing within the context of the module, to where we were embedding the skills development within the module content. So again, making it more real for the students. Um, again, and a big uh, tr one of the big. Uh, kind of streams for me throughout my work is also integration uh, and integration of the CV deli deliverables such as submitting CVs, information on work placement, you know, to be embedded within the pre-placement module, which you might think is a logical place for it to be, but it, it wasn't happening that way. So over the years, it's been more integration of that. And lastly, over the last two years, um, the CV has been awarded marks, 20 out of 100 marks, as part of the module assessment, which you know, I had some difficulty and dilemmas with at the beginning because I didn't believe in what assessments get done, but over the years you learn because I was very naive. And yes, what is this what is assessed does get done. And um, so the rationale behind that I've alluded to the integration. I was very conscious and feedback from students and particularly feedback from employers in 2010 was that students were siloing. They weren't connecting their modules, they weren't connecting modules like they did in second year with possible pre-placement and careers in third year. So the main opportunity I had was to use the second year pre-placement module to integrate the work placement better and earlier into second year. Um, and I was finding huge barriers, students, a lot of work with students in helping, in making students to connect between their life, between college, between part-time jobs, between their skills, their strengths. They were really finding that really, really hard. So I really wanted to focus on trying to help helping students make these connections. Um, why? I suppose as a work pra placement practitioner, my job is to assist students to find work placement 
I can't do that if the student if can't write CV, doesn't know their strengths, and doesn't know where they want to go in terms of the job. I think um, both Ashling and other commentators uh, as well talked about the skills that are needed for the 21st century. Even at a placement level, our employers are looking at students to have capacities and quite developed capacities for self-awareness, for self-directed learning. So that is required even at a pre-placement um, level, I suppose. So uh, that's basically why. Um, so I saw the CV and CV writing, teaching CV writing skills as an opportunity to grow and develop self-awareness, for students to grow and develop their own self-awareness, um, to assess their personal strengths um, and areas for development, which is important as well. But they can work on early on, you know, the year before work placement, they can work on these areas of development before they go out into work placement. I saw it as an opportunity for students to explore career paths, target markets and future opportunities. You can't write a CV without knowing where you're going to send it to. So students really need to sit back and do all that kind of work before they write the CV. And lastly, and I've heard a lot of it today, space, time, the space to reflect, to stop, and to think about where I am now and maybe what I can do in the future. And that's not just career space. I'm not a career guidance counsellor, um, I'm not a counsellor, but I do believe in personal space as well to stop every now and then and say, right, this is where I am now, and this is what I need to, to kind of move forward. Um, a big thing for me was moving away from the concept of the CV as a technical document. It's not just two pages. This was something I saw an awful lot at the beginning. It's okay, Aideen, you know the CV that I'm writing you now, that's not really the one you're going to send to the employers, is it? I mean, I got CVs with Aileen Reader CV. That was the title of the document that would be sent on to me. But, you know, trying to get this across to students at the very beginning was very important. So, for me, one of the first jobs in this particular module, in the CV writing section, was to build awareness of the purpose of this document. This document was the document that was going to go out to employers that was going to be part of the recruitment process by which they would be selected for work placement. And I do think that writing CV is a specific skill that you develop for life. So there's no harm in starting to develop those skills, you know, as part of an undergraduate course. You know, some, some quotes in relation to the CV as how employers and students see the CV, it's the interview on paper. You are in the room. And I think that's I think that's very important. Um, as with Eleanor, I think for me the design was very much a teaching for understanding model. I really liked the graphic um, organizer. I used that quite a lot. Um, the graphic organizer between 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, when I um, I suppose analyzed the two of them, threw up a number of significant gaps in how I've been teaching CV writing over the past couple of years. So what I did when I um, put the, my section of the module together for 2012-2013 was to include introductory guided and culminating performances um, that I felt would help the student to scaffold the um, self-awareness and the self-directed to build those capacities as they were going on throughout the CD writing um, section. So within the introductory performance, um, the students did a self-assessment questionnaire based on strengths questionnaire. Um, it was an opportunity for students to see what strengths were, to, to look at the terminology, to start learning the language about business, about how CVs are written. I was looking for you know, how students related to the particular questionnaire. Then they had to discuss those strengths and skills, so they had to benchmark their own strengths against other people's and draw examples for them and then discuss their strengths as a team. So in that particular exercise, I was really looking for students then to see, you know, could they identify which skills, which strengths were good for the team, or maybe which too much of a one skill could be bad for the team as well in terms of a performance. Um, the guided performance, I took a, an exercise, a recruitment and selection exercise called One From Three, where students are presented with three CVs and they have to, as employers hat, with employer hats on, choose one particular CV that um, they would like to um, hire or interview. It brings a rhetorical context into the uh, situation with the students because they are the employers and it does disrupt, as we were talking about earlier, a lot of their um, ways of thinking around things. I added to this exercise though by making the students within the exercise um, earlier write their own skeleton CVs and then I took all the CVs, distributed them to other people in the class while they were putting their employer hat on. Um, then they had to decide the criteria for selection and then they reviewed CVs that were written by other people in the class and then decided on one out of those three CVs. So um, 
in, in this particular context, what I was looking for was, you know, how do they relate to the material? I gave them a profile. How do they take and manage and create a, a CV from that particular profile? Um, you know, did they embellish it? How do they promote that particular candidate so it would be picked? Um, how well do they work as a team to put together the selection criteria and how well do they um, apply the criteria, that word, kind of work-life criteria to the CV? And lastly, the culmination was a CV tutorial. Something new again, uh, I basically, uh, as, as part of um, marking the CVs, I, I, I used a CV rubric. Um, and basically, as part of the tutorial, there was quite a lot of discussion of the CV rubric within the tutorial. Um, and I wanted to see how well they engaged in the tutorial, what kind of discussion they had. Did they bring a CV with them to the tutorial, for example, which was pretty important. And how well do they use the rubric then for self-assessment and for, for the peer assessment afterwards? So instead of looking at all of the enactments, I looked at the tutorial in particular. Um, I did a classroom assessment technique within the, um, the guided performance, within the one from three exercise. And I found the students were still asking me for examples, more, 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 more examples, more sample CVs, more examples. So very reluctantly, I included a poor CV in the CV tutorial. We have lots of samples of good CVs, but I reluctantly included a poor CV because I didn't really want to give precedence of showing them a poor CV, but I thought we could work through it. So what I ended up doing was running through the assessment of the rubric and in class assessing and grading the poor CV based on the marking based on the rubric. Um, the students then had to grade the, their own CV once we had done that work, and then they had to pass it to their neighbour to see if their neighbour had any additional comments in relation to the CV. So there was a lot, there was obviously peer and self assessment as well um, within the CV tutorial. So, you know, some of the feedback I got afterwards was take more notice of the CV rubric thing and <laughs> make more sense after I got my CV and I felt I could nearly grade myself based on the rubric, which is too late at that stage. But, um, 98% of the students who attended the tutorial found it useful, however, um, only 50% of the students brought um, a CV, CV with them to the tutorial, which is not good. Um, how did I assess the, my technique? I had a lot of assessment, I created a lot of data. I did a classroom assessment technique, the modest point, during the one from three exercise. I got the students to complete an in-class questionnaire, um, a mixed methods questionnaire at the end of the module. The first placement cohort I met every week from January to March before they went out in work placement to prepare them for the recruitment selection and they were given an authentic um, assessment uh, question, it's called Mrs Potter's questions mm -hmm. in class and I got some nice um, data from that. I completed two student interviews and three employer interviews as well just to triangulate the data. Um, and my findings very significantly for me was that writing CV was positive because I hate writing my own CV or my bio or anything like that, I find it very hard. So I was delighted that my students at secondary level found the CV a positive and you know, from there, 75% of the students thought this questionnaire was useful, which was good also. 80% um, thought that one from three exercises was useful. Positivity in terms of languages that students used in relation to CV was great. It was all showing off and giving a good impression. And that was, you know, th that I was really positive about. Um, here you can see what a student said, you know, the CV assignment was about preparing a document, selling yourself, which could be used in applying for a job by completing it with time to improve the CV. Um, another thing that I found that I really liked was that the CV, the students got that it was an intentional document. It was external and it was purposeful. And all our data, all my data proved that. Um, I suppose employer, job, skills mentioned a lot in any of the data. Um, this is a quote from a student, again, to prove the job that, that you're applying for. But the CV was a deeper document and it was seen as a deeper document by students. So students reading documents, it shows, and again, they need to write it deeper. So it's, it's kind of interesting that, you know, some students did uh, were moving away from seeing the CV as a technical document, I suppose, more than anything else. And there was a lot of deeper learning for some students. Some students uh, in CV writing, of course, learned the technical bits, I learned the layout and what font I should use, but other students used the CV writing and, 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 and you know, did learn, you know, the deeper learning as part of the CV writing um, as well. Um, a lot of self-awareness learning. So 
Um, this one I think is a great quote because this student knows already the kind of th difficulties that he's going to face on work placement because he hasn't ever been in an office environment before. So he's already saying, well, this is probably an area they're going to have difficulty with. And for me, the CV is a reflective space. I really liked the fact that there was a, they were students didn't mind reflection. I didn't think that they'd like it, but uh, there was a lot of reflection on that. I'm going to scoot through the rest. Um, Self-directed learning, again, from an employer's point of view, it's very important that we get students who know what they can do and how they can manage their own learning, with lots of quotes there. Um, oops, sorry, I've done that. So the future directions for me was to listen to the student voice by, by my questionnaires and by amassing the data and by you know, querying the students. I was able to um, take student suggestions and, and, and kind of implement them in the classroom, such as um, Looking, putting an upper poor CV, such as I, I got the okay of an alumni to use their CVs as successful graduates as part of sample CVs in the programme. I like to keep the reflective space for students because I think they need it. They need that space. Um, I still need to do lots of work though in certain areas. Students still have difficulty making connections between certain stuff like hobbies or further skills in learning and hobbies in family businesses. And to tie it more significantly with the interview. Um, for me, lastly, um, I think you have to recognise CV and its power um, and value as an intuitive learning tool. Um, I would like to allow space in the curriculum for it from the get-go, which is what one of the employers said, from first year. So, so bring this in from first year. Um, I think using CV not just for like helping with interviews and self awareness could help in transition into the workplace if, if you can iron out some of those things earlier on. And, I would really like to see a reflective space post placement to allow development, further development of CV writing um, skills and self awareness, etc., in after work placement. I think that's um, yeah, me done. Thank you. Thank you.